And welcome back to my channel. If you are just tuning in, my name is Christabel. When you have finished watching this video, please go and check out all the other videos that I've done on my channel. Anyway, in today's video, I'll be talking about meteorites and meteor showers. First, I will start with the meteorites. Earth is bombarded with millions of tons of space material each day. Most of the objects vaporize in our atmosphere, but some of the larger pieces actually fall to the ground. Most of the objects come from asteroids, which are objects made of various types of rock and have existed since the origin of the solar system. A small rocky or metallic chunk of material that travels through space is called a meteoroid. Very small meteoroids are often referred to as micrometeoroids or space dust. These fragments may also be leftover comet debris or were ejected in collisions between other solar system bodies such as the moon or Mars. As a meteoroid travels through our atmosphere, it is heated by friction. That causes it to glow, and if this happens at night, we see a long streak of light known as a meteor. If the object survives the trip and falls to the Earth's surface, it is known as a meteorite. Many of these fall into the ocean. The rest fall on land. Where they, erase, where they await discovery by meteorite hunters. Millions of meteoroids travel through Earth's atmosphere each day. When a meteor encounters our atmosphere and is vaporized, it leaves behind a trail. That burning meteoroid is called a meteor. The appearance of a number of meteors occurring in the same part of the sky over a period of time is called a meteor shower. Many meteor showers are associated with comets which leave behind debris as they orbit through the solar system. Showers occur when Earth's orbit crosses the path of a, me of a comet's orbit. Most meteorites are one of three types, stony, stony iron or iron. These compositions tell us where the meteorite existed in its parent body. An iron or stony iron comet was close uh, sorry, an iron or stony iron meteorite was close to the core of an asteroid, while a stony object was closer to the surface. Meteorites are fragments of asteroids that fall to ground on Earth. Scientists classify these objects according to their chemical makeup, their isotopic compositions, and their mineralogy. And their mineralogy. Beyond those classifications, meteorites are also sorted as stony, metallic, and mixtures. Those G classes can be divided even further. For example, Calisite meteorites are a class of stony iron meteorites that are made mostly of nickel and iron, but also contain olivine crystals. Over the course of Earth's history, many meteorites have fallen to our planet's surface. The most famous are the Ayenda meteorite, the Fuca meteorite, the Hoba, and the, Will and the Willamette meteorites. The Ayanda meteorite fell to Earth in a fireball on February 8, 1969. It was originally about the size of a car and pieces were strewn across the Mexican state of Chihuahua. It has become one of the most studied meteorites of all time and is an excellent example of a carbonaceous chondrite or you can say chondrite. These types of meteorites date back to the formation of the sun and planets and are among the most primitive solar system meteors around. 
They are made mostly of silicates, oxides, sulfides, water, organic compounds, and various minerals. The Fukan meteorite is one of the best examples of a palatite, a type of stony iron meteorite. Because of its large gem like olivine crystals, pieces of this meteorite are much in demand by collectors. The Holborn meteorite was found in Namibia, in Africa. It is a very large 60 turn rock, which makes it nearly impossible to move. It has been declared a national monument in Namibia and is one of the rare meteorites that is also part of a tourist site. Meteorite experts think Holborn fell about 80,000 years ago. It is mostly iron with some nickel and traces of other elements. The Willamette meteorite weighs 15.5 tons and is the largest ever found in the United States. Meteor shower. A meteor shower occurs when a number of meters flash, seem to radiate the same point in the sky. They are usually named for the constellation in which the radiant appears. The meteorite in a shower usually comes from the trail of debris left behind by a comet. In this case of the Geminids and quadrantids, those meteor showers come from debris scattered by orbiting asteroids. When Earth's orbit intersects the dust trail, we see more meters flaring as the cometary debris encounters our planet's atmosphere. Most meter showers are caused by debris from comets. When Earth moves through those debris tails, we see increased numbers of comets. Two meter showers are caused by debris shed by asteroids. The quarantines are very likely caused debris caused by debris from the minor planet 2003EH1. The Geminid meter shower comes from debris shed by asteroid 3200Phaethon. The Orionid meter shower, which occurs in late October each year, is created by dust and debris left by the passage of comet 1P slash Halley. Meteors fall to Earth during the day, although we can't see them. It is very rare that a meteorite will strike a human being. It's more likely that it will fall into the ocean. The best time to view a meteor shower is in the early morning hours, preferably on a dark moonless night. The earliest record of the Perseid meteor shower is found in Chinese annals from 36 AD. There are several favorites and easy to observe meteor showers. The Perseids occur in mid August when Earth encounters the debris trail from Comet Swift Tuttle. They appear to radiate from a point in the constellation Perseus. The shower lasts from mid July to late August with a peak around August 12th each year. The Leonid meter shower can be a very busy one. It occurs each year in mid November and rains debris from Comet 55E slash Temple Tuttle. In 1833, observers estimated that hundreds of thousands of meters flare through the sky. Observers wait for it each year, hoping for another spectacular show emanating from the direction of the constellation Leo. The Geminid meteor shower occurs in December when Earth crosses the path of the asteroid 3200 Phaethon. The meteors appear to come from the direction of the constellation Gemini, and observers have noted that they move more slowly than other meteors. In late April, the larvae bring pieces of comet Slishla C slash 1861G1 slash Thatcher back to Earth, which seem to radiate from the constellation Lyra. The peak of this storm is around April 22nd. 
every 60 years or so, this shower becomes more intense. Wow, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And turn on the notification bell so that you will never miss an upload.